everybody, we're back. We just got done creating these walls. Our next step is we're going to create our floor slab. Back to the architecture tab. Come over where it says floor. I do not want a generic 12 inch floor. I want to change this. So I look at my drop down list. A four inch thick concrete floor is not available. So I need to create one. I will take the 12 inch, I will accept that as default, but I will click on edit type. On structure, right here, I'll click edit, change the material from by category. Mm -hmm. Let me run through that, I need to show you guys that. When I, you'll notice that there's no little dot right here. I can't see the button it takes me to the material editor until I actually click inside this little field. Then the little dot shows up, the button shows up, where I can click and get to my material browser. So I just need to show you guys that. Now, the absolute easiest thing to do, because I know I need concrete, is just scroll down. Concrete cast in place gray. That's what I want. We also have the option, if you click in here and type in concrete, and it will filter out all the materials. And this is great if you've got thousands of materials in the list and you don't want to scroll for 27 pages. That's a great way to filter it. So concrete, cast in place gray, click OK. So that's our new structural material, but we don't want a thickness of one foot. We want a thickness of four inches. Now, if I type four, like you do in AutoCAD, push return, Revit accepts a number all by itself as the number of feet, unlike AutoCAD, a number by itself is inches. So in order to tell it we want four inches, you've got a few options. I can say zero space four, and Revit will automatically make that known as four inches. Or I can type four and then put a double quote at the end, and that's obviously four inches. So I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that. Click OK. Even though nothing has changed here, oh, giraffe, look at that. Generic 12 inch, I forgot a part. Man, that's not good. Click cancel, it didn't do anything. Edit type, duplicate, and this is four inch. There we go, missed that the first time. So let's go back, structure, click edit, change of material, concrete cast in place gray, thickness, is four inches. Click OK. There we go. Four inch concrete. Four inch is concrete. We're happy. Okay. Now, instead of selecting a wall, because I can do that, I can come by and select a wall that's going to create all my lines for the, uh, for the floor slab. I want a little more control, so I want to pick lines. This will allow me to pick some of the lines inside the wall type. I need to back away from the corner on this. If I get too close to the corner, this particular trick doesn't work. So I'm going to hold my mouse, I'm going to hover my mouse over this line. So it's the one, two, the third line from the outside. It's the outside face of the sheathing. I'm going to push the tab key. Now this selected all the walls and every line there. I don't want to do that. Not yet. So I'm going to select just that one line. So I click the tab key on the keyboard one time. This is the second time. Now you can see just that one line in the, uh, in the wall has been highlighted. So now I left click. And we have to use that exact same system on every single wall. So come over here. Hover my mouse there. Tab. Tab a second time. Left click. this corner, hover my mouse, and I always want to hover my mouse over the, over the line that I want to select. So hover over the line in the wall, tab, tab, there we go, left click. Hover over, the, hover over that line, tab, tab, left click. And the other two I have right now, this corner now, hover over the line, tab, tab, left click. Hover over that last line, tab, tab, left click, zoom out. You can see I have a full perimeter going on here. Everything's happening.
happy. Click finish edit mode. It's a big green checkbox. So there we go. There's our first floor slab. On to the second floor slab. Click on floor. This time I don't want four inches of four inches of concrete. I want eight inches of concrete. So I'm gonna click on edit type again. I'm gonna duplicate. Edit. The material stays the same. The only thing changes is the thickness. Eight inches. Click OK. Click OK to close. And once again, I'm going to pick my lines. If I click on pick walls and I zoom in, the default is going to be the locate is going to be the center line of the wall. So I can pick that wall no matter where I pick that wall. It's going to be on the center line of the wall. I don't want the center line. And if you notice, if you zoom in, it looks like that's on the core, outside face of core, which is still not what I want. So what I actually want is I want to pick lines, just like I did last time. But this time, I can just pick the outer edge of the wall. And because the wall was defined on that outside edge, it makes it a little bit easier for Revit to select that point. There we go. It's all happy. I don't want to finish my edit mode yet. I actually want to offset this. So I'm offset. I'm going to offset the foot. I do want to make a copy. I'm going to hover my mouse over my sketch line. And you notice how sensitive the offset command is. That little dash line is what side the offset will be created on. I want it on the inside. So I hover my mouse there and I'm going to click tab just once. So now every single one of those lines, because they're all connected, are highlighted. I click one time, and now I have this funny looking little squared off donut shape. And because the previous, uh, the previous floor slab was four inches thick, I need to drop this one four inches. So I come to my modify tool, I can come over here to my, my uh, properties on the slab that I'm currently creating, change the height offset, Minus zero four, or I can say minus four inches away. We're good. I'm done. Click on the big green checkbox. So there's that. Now, in order to see how well this worked, I need to create a building section. It sounds really complicated. But it's not. I come to my view tab. Click on section. We'll start on the left hand side and I will go to the right. So this is my section. This dash line indicates how far into the building, how deep this section is going to go when I'm looking at it. So if I look over here in my project browser, I now have a set, uh, 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 an entry here for sections. If I expand that out, there's section one. That's this section I just created. Double click. Do, 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 do. Here's my building section. It's exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to zoom in. We can't, we can't see the, uh, the materials in the wall yet because I haven't changed my detail level. So I come down here, change my detail level to medium. There we go. I can even see the hatch on the inside of the concrete. Here. So what I want to do is I, I want it to look like this slab and this slab are the same piece of concrete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my Modify tab. And in the Geometry panel, there's this little button that says Join Geometry. So click on that. And if I select one slab and then the next one, there we go. That line between them disappeared. That is exactly what I'm looking for. So I can either click on the Modify tool or I can press Escape. Either way, because you notice when I pressed Escape, now I'm in the Modify panel. So what I want to do now is I want to take the front part of this wall and drop it down so it's in line with this. But I can't do it until I actually modify the wall. So I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to turn my line weights off. So this is my thin line display up here at the very top. Click on that. I'm at my wall. You see that little down pointy arrow right there? I can use that to change where the bottom edge where the bottom edge of my uh, of my wall is now if I drop this down 
yeah, I could do that, but if I turn my, uh, my, my lines back on, then you can see I've got a really strange looking condition right here. I don't want that. Let's just use my undo command to turn that back up. Turn my thin line mode on again. What I want to do is I want to change the properties of this wall so I can move the front part where the brick is independently of the rest of the wall. So I'm going to, so my, if my wall is highlighted, I come over here to my object properties and click on type. I click on structure, click edit. Down over here, I just use my, I'm clicking in the window, I'm going to use my scroll wheel and I'm going to zoom in. Pan around a little bit. I'm going to click on modify. It says modify vertical structure from section preview only. Click modify. I'm going to select this bottom section of the brick. And I want to uncheck that lock. We're going to unlock that. This is my airspace, and I want to unlock that. Click OK. Click apply. Click OK. Now you notice I've got two of these little down pointy arrows. Now if I move this one, this is where the core of the wall is. It doesn't look like anything's really changed. But I can take this and I can move it independently. And if I move the bottom of the wall, then both of these pieces move together. I'm going to take this section of the wall and I'm going to pull it down until it is in line with the bottom of the slot there. Now because we modified the type on this wall, when I zoom out, pan my way over here, zoom back in, when I highlight this wall, it's the same wall type, so that modification is there. All I have to do is drop that down. There we go. And we can actually see this parameter over here, base extension distance. This little value right here got added because we gave this wall the ability to split its, its distance right here. That's the only thing that comes up. We could even set a uh, another value for this up here at the top, so we can pull the top end of the brick a little bit down a little bit. We're not going to worry about that. Okay. So at this point, we should have our floor slab and our wall types modified. And we should have this building section in place. I'm going to go back to the floor plan. That's enough for this one. We will be back in the next video.